Lyndon, how was your week? How's it going? The Inspired Diabetic. Let me try something here. Okay, Venice, can you hear me? Leon, can you hear me? I want to see if people can hear me now. Apparently, something happened earlier whereby people could not hear me. Anyone can hear me? Let me see. Can't seem to get back, Charles. Okay, you can hear me. Venice, good, good, Leon, thank you. Can I just ask, were you guys hearing me earlier? Apparently there has been some hiccup there, maybe why you couldn't hear me. Uh, very embarrassing, I must say. <laughs> you know? But anyhow, let's start all over again. It's, uh, it's a beautiful Monday evening. Charles Emeka is here. Let me see if I can get back Charles. Just go straight into it. No more introduction. Charles, good. I think you can hear me. I'm gonna bring you back in now and see if we can if we can crack it again. Charles, I'm seeing darkness. Darkness come across the land. The midnight hour is close at hand. Grizzly goons from every room, tombs are closing in to seal your doom, and thou use fight to stay. Now oh, that's going crazy because I don't know what happened there. So, okay, so you could have heard before. Charles, let's see if we can start again. You know, sometimes you've got to stick with what you what you got. You know what I mean? Charles, are you there? <laughs> what, what happened there? What happened there, buddy? Listen. Listen. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you clear. I could hear you perfectly Praise before. Praise Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Thank God. Were you, were you trying to be perfect? No, it wasn't me. <laughs> Who said that? Shaggy? It wasn't me. It must be Shaggy. Yeah. It must have been Shaggy. It must, must have been Shaggy. Well, anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, we missed out a few times here so far, but anyhow, it's all good. I've got Charles Emeka here, and uh, the reason why I asked Charles to come on today, um, Charles, go around and do a lot of um, teaching in different schools and lots of youths, and inspiring them. Uh, but Charles made a video today to say that if your child, your son, your daughter, I put daughter, is in gangs or whatever like that, get them out of the country it's an sos thing get them away now it's urgent it's an emergency charles talk to me i let you have the stage you see what is happening we have been talking about this before for years you know it, now since since i put out the video some people have taken offense to the video saying that i don't fully understand the predicaments maybe some people may be going through. Let me be clear. This yeah. is not for everybody. This is for yeah. people that your child's life is already in danger. You yeah. don't have the time. You do not have the time to plan. You do not have the time to make sure all the blocks are lined up next to each other. You don't have the time yeah. to consider the win before you sow. This needs drastic and immediate action. You can't play with this. You yeah. can't go seeking help from the council or the police or the schools or the government. You need to do something today. Your child's life is at stake. You need to pull them out from where they are now, today. Every time they leave home and every time they leave school, I'm talking to people that their children are already involved in gangs. They're already deep in. There is a target on yeah. your child's forehead and you don't have the time to wait. Right, right. So, so, that, so that's a specific call to um, 
children who are in trouble. They're already in trouble. Already. They're, already, they're in trouble now. They're in trouble yeah. now. Yeah. It needs attention now. While your debate, just get them out of, they're in trouble now. The next phone call could be the phone call that is telling you that your child has been stabbed. Your child has been shot. Yeah. I was in a mm. school on mm. Friday. A young boy was killed at the school gates. Now the library has been named after the young boy, but so what? He's dead. Yes. It needs attention now. The last nine cases I've dealt with, and some people said, oh, I'm not thinking about white people. Tonight's video was specific. It's to the African and Caribbean community. Because the yeah. nine cases I've recently been dealing with, none of those young boys were white. They are mixed race yeah. and black boys. And also, let's look at the facts. Let's look at the stats. It is our community that is heavily and majorly impacted and affected by this thing. So my video today was specifically targeted to the African yes. and Caribbean community. Something needs to be done yesterday what what do you think about the um when like what you're saying now you, you got persons will want to say it is not just uh a black thing and 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 you know the guy named professor green just last week was saying it is institutional racism to sort of put black as the face of the whole knife crime issue you know? it is not just a black thing but when you look at the numbers, yeah. we, are, we are the major victims here. It mm -hmm. is happening to us far too often, every week, every month. Look at how many young people died in the last three weeks. How many of those young people were yeah. white? Mm -hmm. It's obvious. It, it, it is clear. It is clear. It needs immediate attention from the black community. And anybody waiting for government, for policy, for funding, <laughs> I'm going into schools every day, pupil referral units. Yes. This is, you, you don't have, nobody can do this for you but you. Nobody's coming. Mm. Journalists tell me all the time, they're reporting this thing in cycles. In the next two weeks, they will move on to another issue while the issue yeah. is still going on. They'll move on to another issue. Charles, um, we spoke before. Um, okay, give us your, your background because what you're doing, you're going into school and uh, you're speaking to young people. You're trying to get them to um, get out of bad things but also important them not to go into bad things but what's your history what's, well not that you're claim to be but what's your history yeah i used to be one of those young people yeah i used to be one of those young people i've had two murder attempts in my own life the reason why i do this work is because i understand what it's like to walk in that same uniform and walk in those shoes i understand what it's like to walk down the road afraid yeah. The only difference is when we were living unproductive lives, we were more scared about being harmed or hurt. We weren't completely afraid of our lives being taken. Yeah. Wounds, scars, broken bones, but it was rare that lives were snatched daily, weekly. This generation, the people doing the killing now, they have lost their souls. They've lost their minds. They've lost their wills. They've lost their intellect. They've lost their emotion. Some of them are just cold. We go to court. Mm. They're being sentenced. Seven years, eight years, 10 years, 15. There is some of these young people 
it doesn't mean anything to them. Yeah. So the landscape has changed. The dynamics have changed. Mm. The hearts of these young people have changed. The rage in them is greater than ever before. It's not yeah. how it used to be. Some of these people will cut you for the smallest thing. What do you look at me for? Whack. They've sliced you. It's mm. a new day. It's not what it used to be. We are living in dangerous times. Mm. So they, you, you, yeah, you, you, you gave a very profound description of that killing in Tulsa. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I never knew the full um, details of it, but you gave a sort of a, a practical, colorful um, picture of it. The, okay. The, the reason why I'm going after parents right now is because yeah. help is not on the way. This was a young boy that asked his mum to pick him up. As he had his hand on the car door of his mum's car, another car comes screeching around the corner. They fire some shots at him. They miss. Three guys jump out of the car and stab this guy to death in front of his mum. They cut him open as if they were surgeons operating on a body. Jump back in the car mm. and screech off. That's what we're dealing with now. Raids have been taking place over the weekend. 14-year-old boy, 60,000 pounds, found in his bedroom. 60,000 six pounds. 6 not 1-6. Wow. Yeah. You have young boys saying, I started running. I started dealing because bailiffs were coming to our house. You have young boys being the breadwinner in their homes. Making more money than everybody in their house combined. You have some of these young people making 500 pounds in the evening. Some making a thousand pounds a day. Yeah. It's that serious. Mm. The money some of these young people are making. Some of them are making one, two, three thousand pounds daily. Yeah. And they're willing to back up what it is they're doing with extreme levels of violence mm. so there are some parents i fully understand they're scared of their kids but there yeah. are some parents you can see that your child is just at the early stages there are a few things in your house that you know that you didn't buy and you know that you can't afford these are signs don't ignore them when these raids are taking yeah. place, police are going into these kids' bedrooms and they're seeing TVs bigger than TVs that you see in Dixon's and in Curry's. Yeah. Parents have got to start asking, where did my kid, my young child that doesn't even work? Parents must still... I'm talk, I get it. Once a child is 15, 16, you might be afraid of your child. But they're not recruiting them at 15 and 16. The signs, mm. if you're observant, you'll catch it earlier. You'll catch it when they're 11, when they're 12, yeah. when they start truanting from school, when the school is ringing you and saying, so-and-so never came to school today, but he left your home at 7.45 in the morning. Mm. So-and-so never came back. Y your child is supposed to be home by quarter past four. Your child is coming in at eight, nine, ten, eleven. These are signs and these are, this should make you panic and say, look, something is going on. Something is wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. All I'm simply saying is no more waiting for a youth worker, no longer waiting for a motivational speaker, no longer waiting for the superstar. 
you are the superstar in your family, in your immediate community, in your church. Don't be waiting for funding, government policy, the mayors, they will say anything for political gain. It has to be the people mm. in the community that just simply focus on saving the one they can see. It could be the one in your house. It could be the one that your brother's child, your sister's child, your cousin. Save the one in yeah. front of you. Forget the masses. Forget this, the crowd. Just save the one you can see. Help the one you can see. And if your child is already showing signs that they're in, if your child has a yeah. target on their back, let us also be honest. Sometimes yeah. these yeah. young boys that somebody wants to hurt have also hurt other people. If they haven't hurt mm. other people, they've been around people or they're known to people or they know people that have hurt other people. So if I'm coming after you, Silborn, and I can't find you, but I suddenly see your friend, I'll take him for now. So is that that saying that's that saying in Jamaica which we have, if uh, you can't catch Quaker, you catch him shut. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Yeah. Or you catch him shut. Um, so are, are you trying to say then that one has got to do a, a rethink of of actually dealing with the the immediate sphere of influence the people that you're close to your house your neighbors ne your, next the, door. the families that next door yeah yeah a couple of months ago i had some youth show up on my neighbor's door i didn't wait to say this doesn't concern me i could see that my neighbor was kind of afraid so i went out yeah that's my neighbor i went out next door I speak for a living, I train for a living, and yes, I have a lot of impact with a lot of kids, but there are some close to me, there are some next to me. Help the one you can see. Yeah. And right now, it, it's not just men, it's just connect with the child you can see, the young man you can see, the young woman yeah. you can see. Connect with that one you can see. It's not the, sc the school's you know, not going to do it for you. Yeah. The youth center's not going to do it. Yeah. The church is not going to do it for you. You're going to have to do this for yourself. Yeah. As, as much as we work hard and as much as we try and move in as many areas as possible, the impact we're making is minimal. Charles, let's go back. I know you for years and you have been doing this bit for years. In comparison to then, and, I'm, and of course, lives have been impacted. Um, Paul McKenzie and I were speaking today. Lives have been impacted. Yeah. But on a collective, is it getting, is it really that bad? I mean, I'm just asking you. For, I know it's a, it may be a silly question, but you're a person who, who's experienced in this area. Tell me. Okay. Before, when I used to go into prisons, and yes. I would say to them, I used to wear the exact same uniform you're wearing now they would stop in their tracks. Yes. Now they say to you, is that it? Mm. They've seen more than me. They've experienced more than me. It's a whole new ball game. A mm. young person, they, regularly they say, I don't expect to live beyond 21. They've accepted that they could yeah. die at any time. A man that is aware and has accepted that he could die is also willing to kill without taking a second look. So the dynamics, yes. the temperature, the atmosphere, the season, everything has majorly changed. It's not like before. All you need to know is to mm. just check how could 10, 11, 12 people be killed within 14 days? That never used to be the case. And another way of looking mm. at it is we used to be so outraged before when we heard that a young person would die. We're desensitized. We're desensitized. It's normal. It's normal. There's a young girl called Agnes. She went to Haggerston School. 
you know that we also run the speak out challenge in schools where we teach people how yeah. to speak. Yeah. Agnes was shot yeah. in Hoxton. She was standing in a chicken shop and somebody shot a gun through the window and it shot her and it got her in the neck and she died. Yes. There was outrage. Now, no impact. You got a point. You got a point, Charles, because of all the children which have just died recently, there's been no march, there's been no sort of sounds or anything like that. It's like. There'll be more in the next couple of weeks. And it's getting darker. It's getting darker. There's a point system going on. There'll be more in the next couple of weeks. Mm. It's not even news anymore. So all I'm seeing, everybody, mm. your only focus is to save your own for now. Save the one mm. around you. Whatever that means. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much on Instagram, Lan, June, and um, guys on Facebook. Um, I've got Charles Emeka here. We're just exploring and just calling it what it is and not men men mincing around with words about this whole atrocities with killing. Uh, I felt that it's very important to keep a focus on this from the Solution Oriented Summit and to bring on persons who are um, key persons working in this area. As a matter of fact, what I'd ask you to do as much as possible is to share this video. Everyone on this, just press share this video, press like, share it to your friends or whatever like that, and let's keep talking. Charles, <clears throat> the other thing also is this. Families, parents, let's forget about government and police and all those sort of things. Families, parents, what, what, what is there, what, what, where's been the failure? Is, is it, is it, where, where's been this breakdown? <laughs> it's, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Especially in communities which had strong discipline factor, the Caribbean family the African family, where there's a strong disciplinary factors which are in place. Is it, is it, is it, and this is a second question, is it a Caribbean thing still, or is it African, Somalian, it's all jumbled up now. But first of all, the family, where does the discipline fit? The, the, don't forget, everything about the world we live in has changed. Yeah. The family dynamic yes. has greatly changed. Even yeah. though I say stop looking at the government or stop looking at policymakers, the government has yeah. had a hand to play in the mess that we now have. Yes. We're no longer allowed to discipline our children. You can't even talk to them directly. The breakdown of the home, the breakdown of families, there's so many things that even social media so there are so many things that have caused us to be where we are now. So Your child eats in their bedroom. Mm. Your child spends three to four hours a day playing Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. Your child comes in and you allow them to lock themselves away in their room. <laughs> Your child now tells you, the parent, that you need to knock on the door before you come into their room and you accept it. Mm. You can see your child is going through a rough time, but you tell yourself it's only a phase. You have to confront to overcome. Now, coming to the issue, once upon a time, the whole killing gangs, it used to be a Caribbean issue. That is no longer the case. Mm. In fact, the, it's now more of an African issue than it even is a Caribbean issue. When we were young, yeah. our parents yeah. would say, be careful of those Jamaicans. Yeah. It's not the case anymore. Many of the gangs in different areas in London, they're led by Nigerian boys. They're led by Somalian boys. They're led by Zimbabwe boys. They're led by Zambian boys. They're led by Ugandans. Mm. It is now an African and Caribbean issue. Mm. It's white. Then white, mixed race, 
Everybody's now in. Everybody is now in. But before, African parents used to say, those Caribbeans, now yes. it's in their own house as well. Yeah. You can't say those people anymore. That thing you were afraid of is now living in your house. And is even mm -hmm. worse. And is more violent. And is more angry. And carries more rage. So everybody is in yeah. it now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so what? Okay, I understand the immediate one of that child who is in serious harm ways because he's involved yeah. in gangs, and get him out of that harm, get him out of the, the the danger zone. But what is the ultimate? It is something we keep talking about. What is the the key solution? Charles, I mean, from your perspective, the key solution, which is which we know is not short term. No, it's not. You know, but what is the key solution from your perspective? Well, as as we all know, there, there's no hard or fast rule. There's no manual on how to be a great parent. All of us are learning how to work this thing as we go along. We came from a generation where maybe our parents were too strict. Mm. rules 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 very little love maybe now we have a generation where there's too much love and very few rules there needs to be a balance between rules and relationship yes and they yes. say rules without relationship will always create rebellion rules without relationship will always create rebellion there has to be balance and we have to be more focused at catching our young people at an earlier age, just before Pinpointing they go into yeah. secondary school. Because once they're in mm. secondary school, there are so many other influences around them. When your child is in primary school, you pick them up every day. When mm. your child goes to secondary school, you give them a key to the house and you hope they come back straight after school. Mm -hmm. now if also another factor is parents are working more yeah. so if a child gets home mum is not there dad is not there they have free reign yeah. and if nobody's there somebody else will step in the gap the senior, the elder will step in the gap yeah. Hey, man, I need you to pick this thing up for me. I'll give you a hundred pounds. Just go over there, give that guy. And then and then that same child, I've been trying to get some Xbox or something from their parents. They've been trying to get the Xbox. They've been trying to get those trainers. They yes. want those latest Jordans. Mm. And an elder or a senior comes up to them and says, yo, my man, what size are you? Meet yeah. me here tomorrow at five o'clock. I get you that. It's it, it's done. One hundred and eighty pound trainers without blinking. Don't worry, young man. I got you. The Leora started. Take that twenty pound and right. put it in your pocket as well. The guy drives off. Mm. The attraction has started to kick in, because there was a gap. Somebody wasn't yeah. there to cover. Yeah. So many factors. Mm. Your mum and dad are going through financial struggles. Mum, can I have that? Can I have the iPhone 11? Son, right now we can't afford yeah. that. But you're seeing your friend, who you know, his parents have the same financial challenges as your parents. But he's got the iPhone 11. You say, man, that's a nice phone. How did you get it? Man, it was easy. So what do you do? If you're interested, I can show you what I do. I can introduce you to my big man. 
Mm. Meet me tomorrow after school. It's only 10 minutes up the road. The attraction, the lure, the pull has started. Does that big man becomes very attractive when there is a lack of the father? Absolutely. In the Absolutely. Home? Father or mother. Yeah. We, we, we've continued to hammer on this point about the father not being there. Yeah. Recent, st recent stats show that a lot of these young killers have lost a connection and contact with their mothers. Don't forget, it's women that give us compassion and empathy. So even mm -hmm. if the mum is not there, or the mum is strung out on drugs, or the mum is dealing with her own issues, yeah. then this boy is forced to become a man and become your partner and the covering for his younger siblings overnight. Quickly. Because yeah. in every young boy, there's a king and there's a fool. You are asking him to be a king when he is not yet ready. What does a king do? A king provides. A king protects. Takes care of, Takes his, kingdom. Care of his kingdom. Clearly, mum doesn't know how to look after us. Dad is a waste man or is no good or is not here. Somebody mm. else is around that is going to show me the way. And it's the guy that drives into the estate with the top of the range, range Rover. Gives us a little bit of money. He's always hugging us. Always encouraging us. I like that. His life looks attractive. He's always yeah. got new trainers yeah. every day, new pair of trainers. He's wearing a 13,500 pound Rolex watch. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And it's quick. What about the church? Who? Is that it, it's it's, trying it's to put me in the bedrock of the, 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 the bedrock of communities, the bedrock of the black community, the church, that that umbrella organization. I I, I, I think it's clear to most people that the, the church have failed a long time ago. Mm. The church has failed a long time ago. Yes, yes. The church wants people with issues and challenges to come to them. The church needs to go to where the issues and challenges are. Ah. Doesn't matter how many youth conferences and youth seminars you have. Most of those youth conferences and seminars are for people that are already in church. Yeah. Most of those youth conferences and seminars are for kids that are already in church. But if yeah. you take that same youth conference to the community hall in the estate where those killings are taking place, you create a completely different environment. Mm. They're not coming to your chandelier, beautiful, cushioned church because they don't fit into that environment. They're not coming. Yeah. They are not coming. Yeah. You have to go to them. You have to make it attractive to them. Some churches have the resources to bring in a Stormzy. Yes. When you're trying to attract and deal with these young people, Kirk Franklin can't do it. Donnie McClurkin mm -hmm. can't do it. They can't relate. Yes. It is somebody they respect, somebody they admire, a Jay Huss, somebody that they can connect with, somebody that they feel understands yeah. where they're coming from. But the church must go to them. If we want to get scriptural, Jesus went into the marketplace. Mm. He didn't say, I'm right. going to stay in the temple and you come to me. You're right about that. Jesus never stayed one place. He kept, kept going, going, isn't it? He kept moving. He kept going. The scripture then tells us that he sent them out two by two. He didn't tell them to stay in. He sent them out. And he went to the mountain top and fed them exactly. as well. They have needs. Mm. Every gang meets needs of a human being. They meet the needs of a family. They meet the needs of contribution. They meet the needs of progression. 
They meet the needs of respect. Gangs meet yeah. human needs. Needs. They meet the need of feeling appreciated. Yes, yes. Sometimes yes. you look at a yes. young person and you tell him you're a king. You're going to go fine. You see the tears immediately start rolling down their face. Nobody's ever told them, well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it, it's, it's a serious issue that um, the, the, the community, you know, you talk about the village. The, the, the village it takes a village you know, to raise a child. Yeah. One hand can't clap. You can't yeah. even wash your hand properly with one hand. Yes, yes. And you know what, Charles? You know, I, <clears throat> I was even thinking the other day, and, and you can agree to this, that your parents alone can't even raise mm -hmm. you because you need a community. You need people around you. You need your cousins. You need your uncles. You need your, your neighbors all chipping in. So if you're walking down the road, and you do well. I'm from Jamaica in Ochoos, and I couldn't go down Ochoos in the road and uh, do something bad. The message would get to my parents quick, and that person can actually have the right to pull me up. Some some people say to me, "Oh, why must they go to Africa, or why must they go to the Caribbean? They need a different perspective. They need a change of environment." There's a young boy. He was slashed in his arms two years ago. Had a conversation yeah. with his mum. Mum sent him back to Jamaica. He's not very academic. Yes. But right now, he's in Jamaica. He's a tattoo artist. Completely yeah. different perspective. Completely different world. But most important, importantly, he's alive. Mm. He's alive. Who you are at 15 and who you are at 18 is very different. But you need the chance to, first of all, be able to get to 18 before you can look back and say, maybe I wasn't making the smartest decisions. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes they just need to be picked up and put in a different environment. I know a lady who has taken some of these young people in the last six months, a Caribbean woman. Her name is Winifred. And she has taken some of those children and taken them to Saudi Arabia. They are now living in Saudi Arabia. Some of these young boys from South London, they are living currently right now as we speak in Saudi Arabia. They're alive. That is taking them, that is taking them out. Taking, taking them, them out. out of the... You can't keep these young people in the same place where they are. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. having the same diet around the same people nothing has changed but you expect to change mm -hmm. nothing has changed they have to be shown something different they have to be given a different perspective in every young boy there's a king and a fool mm -hmm. expose them even if you send them away for a year yeah just to the temperature comes down I, I'm just seeing a, a note here, and this is a good point. Um, many, someone said, I would not raise my child in London. You know? Very good point. London is a... Inner city, inner city London has major challenges. Yeah. Even the school you're sending your child to. I work in different boroughs. Forgive me to say this. I was in a school in Brent on Friday. It was yeah. a painful experience. Because I could yeah. see that these young people were being shortchanged from every angle. I was in a, another school in Hammersmith and Fulham on Thursday. Yes. These kids had everything. They, in fact, we filmed that in every room we were in had a video camera computers electric windows coffee machines drinks machines yeah the teachers are fed for free all day every day 
So a teacher that is given free food every day, doesn't have to pay for food, doesn't have to pay for drinks, and all they need for them to do is teach, the students are going to benefit so much more. Mm. Mm. But then you've got another school where the teachers spend half of their time making sure the children stay alive and you have two plainclothes policemen on site 24-7. Completely different scenario. Yeah. Even in state schools, the landscape is not the same. It's not the same. In Some kids have it so good they, they, they don't even realize. And some mm. kids, if we're being honest, we're asking them to learn with their hands tied behind their back with a gag in their mouth and with their feet chained. And we're saying, learn in this unconducive environment. Environment, yeah. So based on where you found yourself, in most boroughs, there are only two or three or four good schools. If your child doesn't get into that, what do you do? That's where the home, that's where the home has got to be tight. That's where the home has to be tight. That's where the home that's has to be home. tight. That should be the fundamental hub. Absolutely. So the government then, let's, let's go, let's, okay, so we, we talk about the environment which is not conducive. Uh, so therefore, this is where the government has a part to play. As you say, it is a multifaceted um, situation. So we, 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 we've talked about these, the youths who are in problems, serious problems because they're in gangs. Take them yep. out before they are taken out. Take them out before they Period. are taken out. Take them out of that equation, out of the country. Very drastic. Many people say people, drastic. people are saying drastic. People saying I'm, I'm, very drastic. If you have, if they said to you, your child has a terminal illness, but if you can mm. raise forty thousand pounds, your child will live. You will find the money. Yeah. If you want something bad enough, you will find a way. But there's also something else. If that parent is saying that they cannot afford to send that child to Jamaica or um, Africa, there's another thing. They'll find the money to bury Absolutely. that child, which is thousands in a child. And wow. Exactly. Or they will even do a GoFundMe page to raise money for the burial. Yes, 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 yes. First, get the child okay. out of the environment. That's all I'm saying. Out of the you can yeah. figure out yeah. the rest later. I remember Charles Kieran always used to say, jump off the mountain and your wings will grow on the way down. Yes. Take the decisive step and we'll figure out the rest later, but remove them from that scenario. Some, some, somebody said, yeah. oh, why don't you just say, take them to a different area? It has been known to us when a parent moves outside of London, their children can simply jump on a train and come back because they're missing their friends. And they yes. come back in and many young people have ended up dead. I've heard what happened to Luton. Luton is something similar where they move them to yep. Luton and they find also people that they're trying to run away from in Luton. Like exactly. Well. And, and you don't hear much about Luton, but Luton also Luton has, has a, Luton has some major issues. Yeah. Luton has major issues. Manchester, Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, so so in, in five key pressure points, five key solution points that one can look at, so we can wrap this up in a way we're leaving, um, leaving with this, ladies and gentlemen, on Instagram land. Unfortunately, you cannot see Charles, but I'm talking to Charles Emeka, who is a, a what should I say, a man from the street. Who is trying to take the children from the street? Am I right, Charles? We're we're we're, we're trying to. You see, when we first started in this thing called speaking training, yeah, I thought I could help everybody. Yes, yes. I realized after a while that my name is Charles, not Jesus Junior. Yes, yes. All we can do is keep planting seeds. Some will bear fruit. Some will die. So therefore, one of the key solutions is recognize the fact that you're not Jesus and you cannot Can't save, save everyone. Right? Try not to have the... 
what about the, all these organizations? There are tons of I've got lists yeah. of organizations which have been coming on my show. What what's your perspective on that, child? I mean, there are tons of organizations out there. There are tons of organizations. A lot of these organizations are dependent on funding. And if you are dependent on funding, you can't deliver and do the job properly. Because as soon as the funding is taken away from you, what next? That's it. I don't believe that any organization that works with young people should only be a charity. I think you should be a social enterprise so you can also charge yeah. as well. So yeah. yes, there's a balance between funding and charging. If your work is only based on when somebody gives you money, you won't work for very long. And sometimes you have Are to you also be it? willing to do it for free. Mm. If, if it's based on funding, oh, we were running some workshops, we were doing some training, but our funding ran out. And they blame the government. Yeah, because the government, the government... For example, there was a massive, massive, massive program we were doing up until the summer for the National Citizen Service. Yes. It was a project with um, David Cameron and Boris Johnson. And yes. throughout the summer, NCS, many people would have heard of it, we, the, groups of young people would be taken... They would get to go on. So they were not messing around. They didn't have time to be out on the streets because they were away for two, three weeks, getting personal development training, so on and so forth, getting to partake in so many activities. That funding is not there this year. Mm. What do you then do? And, it's, and, and the, the, the young people also need that they service need now. So... Uh, Many of the organizations out there are 100% totally dependent on funding. And funding, as we know, one of the organizations I've worked for, we've had funding for the last 12, 13 years. And when we meet with yes. other funders, they will always say to us, you guys are in a really unique situation. Because most funders... They give it to you once, twice, maybe three years, max. Mm. Then you have to go out there again, go looking for funders. And with the current times we're in, people are not funding things how they used to before. In 2008, we were commissioned to deliver training across the whole country. Every single school across the country. The recession kicked in. And that funding yeah. was pulled back just to London and Essex. And that particular yeah. funder is a unique funder because most organizations won't even fund how that organization has funded us. Yes. Charles, this, this sounds like doom and gloom, uh, but it's a reality that we're dealing with. It's a reality that we're dealing with, isn't it's it? It's reality... The, the situation is not pretty in any shape or form. But yes, you, yes. like I said, focus with the one in front of you. The one beside focus you. Focus the one in front of you. The one behind you and the one... Just focus on the ones the around left, you. Right and east, west, north and south. Don't yes. wait for any organization to swoop in and save you. Don't wait for the church to swoop in and save you. So, so ladies Faith. and gentlemen, I, I think... Sorry, yeah. faith. Faith is the, works. Yeah. Faith is action. Yeah. After the prayer, yeah. there needs to be corresponding action. There needs to be yes. movement yes. in the direction of how can I help you? Yes. Not yes. just staying yes. Yes. behind the pulpit and preaching. Preaching is for people yes. that have already been converted. Preaching is for people that already have the same mindset. When you're dealing with people that yes. don't have the same mindset as you, we just need to talk. You just need to share ideas yes. and hear their opinion and share yours. Focus mm. on the people immediately around you, your son, your daughter, your nephew, your niece, your younger brother, your younger sister, your cousin, your neighbor's yes. child. Yes. And yes. everybody yes. can do that. And, and, and also for, in regards to 
the one of the things I was thinking about as well is like different training. Uh, trainings because a lot of parents sometimes they can't they have learning difficulty issues they got um, mental challenge that's one of the realities that's very well. true you know so therefore the, the, the second tier after you take them out of the situation ship them out then you have the other bit whereby you deal with the ones which are close to you start to be that uncle the same factor of the uncle you know man from uncle you know what I mean get to know these children, get to, you know, one of the things also I keep talking about, Charles, is um, neighborhood watch, whereby you know the people in your yeah. neighborhood. It, we, we used to laugh at it when we listened to Sesame Street, who are the people in the neighborhood, the people that you meet each day. You know, I, I use this analogy, I mean, I was speaking to you earlier today, and I'm going to develop on this as well. I'm a neighborhood watch coordinator for my street, and as I said the other day, somebody put up on the Facebook Messenger, or on the, we got a Facebook Messenger, we got a, a WhatsApp group. Uh, somebody rang on their bell. And because I can see where they live to a point, I look out and say, don't worry, I'll, I'll pop across there now just to check, you know? But I looked before. Now, secondly, young boys coming home from school and they feel like they might be threatened somehow by maybe some boys following them. <clears throat> the question to ask anybody out there now is, can your son, go to a house, 10 houses from yourself while he's on his way home to knock on that door and say, Mr. James, I feel unsafe. Can I come inside now? Yeah. I think, I think things like that need to happen because this is where we are talking about developing and strengthening the community, looking at these different solutions to protect our children, but for the community, the village to really be resurrected. You know, people will say sometimes the government has taken the... Uh, the power out of the yeah. parents' hands. Well, would you agree to that, child, that the government can come into your house? I mean... <laughs> well, the government has taken... See, I, I, don't, I don't say anyone should abuse their kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my kids... I was raised by an African parent. Yes, yes. My, my children are disciplined. <laughs> okay. I rest that case right there. <laughs> they, they're my kids. It is my yeah. responsibility to make sure that I get the best. Sometimes it looks like, whoa. Mm. I love them and I love them enough to rebuke them and discipline them this thing of, oh, yeah. I'm just going to sit by. Yeah. Each child is different. Some mm -hmm. conversation mm -hmm. will get the message across. Some a louder voice. Some is just a look. Yeah. But you will not disrespect me. Yeah. And and two more two more sort of solutions. Um, I, 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 can... I, I think I think as well. Ultimately, I'm all about personal development, empowerment, motivation. You can't give what you yes. don't have. That's a good you point. You can't yeah. give what you don't have. You need to be the role model to your child. Deal yes. with your issues, whatever those issues are. What we really need to hear. Mm. Sometimes we say to young people, "Oh, who do you want to be like?" How many celebrities will they mention before they mention you, their parent? Yes, yes. A, a, a young ch student I was with today gave a speech on how their mum is their inspiration. Yes. How many people will your child mention before they <clears throat> mention you? Yeah. And that's an indictment upon the home. So you have to say, I want to be the first example to my child, irrespective of how old you are, irrespective of what you have going on. Every problem has an expiry date. Get up from the issue, the challenge, the problem you're currently facing. Fight. Fight. Fight for your child. Fight for yourself. Yes. Fight. Yes. Fight yeah. for your future. Yeah. Yeah. Fight for your finances, because we know money is always a major factor. 
Fight yeah. for your finances. Yeah. Fight for your future. Fight for your family. Fight for yourself. Yeah. I will be better this year. Not in January 1st. I'll be better this year. Mm. I will start developing myself. I will read a book or two a month. If I'm not healthy, I will do what it takes. I will work on myself. Yes. You can't be asking your child to read when your child has never seen you read. Mm. Work on yourself. Ask for help. Seek help. Stop making excuses. Yes, where you currently are might not be your fault. It might not be your fault. Yeah. But to stay where yeah. you are is your fault. Wow. It, 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 is, it is powerful, Charles. I mean, and, and thank you for coming on because uh, even seeing the level of indiscipline whereby you've got young people giving karate kick on police, it shows that it made, somebody said it's just a one and it's a minority, but it shows, it is sending a signal that it is taking it to a yeah. next level when young people can actually disrespect um, authority in that way. Don't 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 don't, 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 don't get me wrong. The police have caused a lot of damage as well. Stop and yeah, search. I'm, yeah. Right now, I'm all for stop and search, simply for a yeah. short term measure because we need to get a lot of these weapons off. But any form of stop and search that is not intelligence led, it creates more distrust, more anger, more bitterness within the community. So therefore, you'd completely disagree with Trevor Phillips' amnesty, whereby the <laughs> anyway we won't go there. Don't, don't, you disagree. You know, um, yeah, yeah. The police. I mean, come on. We 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 know about prejudice. We know about the stereotypes. We know yeah. about blatant, outright institutional racism. Those things still exist, and for a lot of these young people, yeah. three white boys are walking down the road and two black boys. They're all wearing tracksuits, they're all wearing hoods, and over and over yeah. and over again, young black boys are being disproportionately stopped. But at the same mm. time, right now, we will say that young black boys are being disproportionately killed. Yeah. Right now, at the moment, with the amount of young people we're engaging with that are telling me if I have to, I will kill somebody. I am all for stop and search. It saves more yeah. lives. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Charles, listen, we'll have to watch this on the replay and pick up some points from it. And, I, and I'm asking persons as well to really watch this and go on the replay. Uh, I think we're reaching a point now we cannot be politically correct. We cannot mince words. Yeah. We've got to say it as it is. It's going to offend. <laughs> but it's better to offend than to bear. Absolutely. Um, some, some, somebody said to me, oh, it's not just black boys. There are white people in trouble as well. I completely agree with you. Tomorrow, I'm yeah. in Twickenham. On Wednesday, I'm back in Bethnal Green. On Thursday, I'm in New Addington after East Croydon. Friday, yeah. I'm in Merton. So... But like I said, the impact we're making is minimal. We're not even wow. touching the surface. So wow. everybody, where you can, connect, Hands touch, help, empower, motivate, persuade, influence, encourage the ones that you can see. Right. And that, I believe, is one of the key answers and the key solution Deal with those who are in that close proximity, ladies Absolutely. and gentlemen. Find your neighbor's son, find your siblings, whatever, male or female, whatever like that. Start to get to talk to them as much Absolutely. as possible. Charles, any, any final word, boss? I said you, Man, you, said you, I said you well, some God, God, <laughs> God keep us safe. Um, yes. But after we finish praying, let's do. After let's we do. finish praying, let's do. Faith is action. Yeah. Faith is now. Once again, finally, yeah. when I'm saying pick up that child and take them to Africa or take them to the Caribbean, I'm talking about the child. 
that is in trouble now. Not every no. child. Talking about the child that is in trouble yeah. now. Now, the one which is crisis proportion. Yes. And also, don't quickly try to get them back. No. Because as you heard about no. that case... The there one are that, so many cases of, that oh, they were there for six months and then you bring them back. You can't reorientate or change somebody's mind in six months. Yes. Yes. Sometimes yes. it will take years. But it's yeah. better that your child comes back yeah. in three, four years' time, is alive, is a new person, has a new mentality and mindset, thinks like a man, operates like a king, that you're having to do, as we've kept on doing over and over again, putting young men into wooden boxes in different cemeteries across London and Essex. And therefore, for those with young children, especially young boys at this time, spend that amount of time and invest in them because it makes at least they've got that solid foundation Absolutely. as well from early Absolutely. now. Also, try and keep your yeah. young people busy, be that through sports, yeah. clubs, activities. If they're busy, yeah. you, there's a see, you could do everything. Don't forget, my mum and dad were not divorced. Yes. I still chose the path I went down. Okay, so sometimes yeah. people say, oh, my mum's not there, oh, my dad, no. My mum was there, my dad was there. I chose that lifestyle. Yes. But at the same time, put as many positive blocks in place that it makes it harder for your young person to even consider going down that path. If they have yeah. ambition, Charles. if they have aspiration, yeah. then they're seeing other options other than rolling with an elder or a senior or with their crew. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just to let you know that in 2015, when I started the Silver and Show, Charles was one of those guinea pigs. I say guinea pigs. One of the first persons that I got on the show. <laughs> because what I did was chose persons that I knew and um, to start the show. And I'm going to post that video again so you can watch it. And Charles, your book as well. You see, those books that you wrote? Yeah, the, the first one was called Against All Odds. Against All Odds was pretty much talking about my life, my challenges, my struggles, my mistakes. Uh, yes. Build castles, don't dig graves. Cage behind bricks and steel. Um, yes. Remember, it pays to pray. And um, trigger happy and dangerous. Yes. I'll, I'll put the links. I'll put the links. Our Charles and I will make sure we put the links as well so persons who want to get in all of those books because I believe very strong again, um, Charles, that we need to actually write our story than other persons writing our story. As Absolutely. Much as possible. And, and that can empower others. So listen, I want to thank you so much for that, Charles. I'm so sure. The last, the last, well, thank the, you for the last thing I want to say, please bear <laughs> yeah. in mind the person you want to come and save you, it is not their children that are being killed. The person that you're hoping to come and save you the policymaker, the judge, the lawyer, the person with the finances, their children are not being killed. One hand can't clap. Yeah. It still takes a village to raise a child. Good night, everyone. God Thank bless. Cheers, Charles. Have Take a good care. night. Bye bye. All the best. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Bye bye. Okay, well, well, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for, for joining, and um, I'll wrap up now, but just want to thank Charles so much for coming on tonight and to sort of share. I wanted him to share as much as possible because I believe that um, sharing is, as they say, sharing is caring. And out of what he said, it is something I believe that we need to really lay hold of and to be challenged. Uh, we cannot afford to be, what should I say, politically correct anymore we cannot afford to be worried about how we feel and the the emotions as much as possible i believe it is time now whereby we call it a spade a spade and um, when you have a spade what you do you dig you know you dig deep you know that's what you have a spade you dig deep and you come up with fundamental solutions to deal with these things don't throw things under the carpet um don't don't put things aside don't procrastinate when you've got these issues but to deal with them now. What came out of it, very profound and very strong, and this is what I believe is very profound and very strong, is that each person, instead of trying to reach the world, 
first of all, remember you're not Jesus, right? We cannot save the world, but we can save each one. The one next door to you, your uncle, child, your brother, sister's child, those who are in close proximity, behind you, um, in front of you, to your side. Those are the children that you can actually do. We all have a responsibility at this time. It is a crisis, whether we like it or not, whether we say there's more good children than bad children, but it is a crisis because what you sow, you reap. And what you're seeing is somewhat of a suicide, a suicide where you've got children killing each other, a community killing each other. They are the future. They are the future generation, if you check it out. So if the future generation who are young are killing out themselves, who is going to lead the future? And that's a problem, and that is very dangerous. So ladies and gentlemen, please share this video, tell people about it, and you know, Paul McKenzie and I, we're talking about different things, Steve Akinsane, we're talking about different things, so therefore we're keeping the spotlight on this particular issue, getting all different perspectives because we're eyeballing it and making sure that we lead on the narrative and not just to allow others to actually take the space, right? So thank you very much and have a good night. But before I go, I want to invite you to a wonderful service, Unlimited Praise, this Sunday, sorry, my apologies, this Saturday, the 24th, and that's at my church, uh, Word of Life in uh, Grove Park. And it's going to be a nice time of celebration as well. Unlimited praise, you know. Um, Sunday, the 24th of no Saturday, the 24th of November, from 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. with Biola Olatunde, Hannah Olatunde, and uh, Anu Anna Amidee, and the Word of Life worship team. So I'm going to post that video there for you to look at as much as possible. But, um, you know look after your children and have a fantastic night and uh and i believe the prime minister is still intact actually many people are trying to get rid of the prime minister but i believe she's intact i believe at this moment that the uk need to have a stable time because with the brexit the eyes are off certain balls and we need to have all eyes on certain balls ladies and gentlemen so have a smashing night and thank you very much for coming on and um remember to like and subscribe to my youtube channel um Silburn tv and I'm going to post as well Charles um, and make a video and details about his book as well. So thank you very much and have a good night. Those on Instagram land, those on uh, um, Facebook land and for all the various comments which have been made, those have been seen, some have been put up there. Um, not able to actually, uh, you know, uh, mention some of them. Issy Marshall, thank you very much. Paul Petula, Venice Clearly, Nosa, um, Jacqueline Wabara, thank you so much for coming on. Um, Shereen Scott, Venice Clearly, yeah. All of us center, okay. Thank you so much for coming on. Please share this video, like. Um, um, the book business, um, you're late, but you can catch it on the replay. You can catch it on the replay, which is on. Um, uh, Facebook, you can catch it on the replay also on Instagram as well, which is on Instagram. Um, and the topic was about the wanton disregard for authority uh, in regards to talk about knife crime and the youths. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good night. Peace out. Thank you.